rejoicing for something I have never seen. And today we stand here with the family of Everett, Tavira, you know, I don't want to mess up anyone's name. As a matter of fact, can you come stand up here? I don't even want to do this by
liars that are resulting in the deaths of our loved ones. And this goes beyond just closing down right and saying, by the way, they're not hiding it anymore. They're not even showing up to BOC meetings. They're, the, 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 I'm like almost at a loss for words because there's just such a clear dereliction of duty. There's just such apathy for human life and it's disgusting. And we are in a place where yes, we need to shut down Rikers Island, but I need to make one point very, very clear. Rikers is not just physical walls, it is a culture. And I want to give you an example of that culture that is killing people. At one of the last hearings, I asked COBA about what would reduce the violence, referencing programs like CAP and PACE that, by the way, reduce violence upwards of 35 to 45%, but they have not scaled those programs. Asked about decarceration. You know what their answer was to reducing violence? Well, if there were more nonviolent offenders on the jail, it would dilute the population and that would reduce the violence. That's culture! Saying that the only way to stop the violence on Rikers is to cage more people. To expose more people to potential death. There is no fixing that. We need to close Rikers, but it also starts with ending solitary. Because just like solitary is not a unit, and Rikers is not just walls, solitary are conditions. Solitary is happening not just in protective custody, not just in the solitary units. It's happening in RMAS. It's happening in MO. It's happening in general population. My colleagues went just yesterday and saw it. People are being tortured, and it must end now. So we will continue to some act and stop the talking and start the acting. Don't tell me to shut up. No, I did 25. Don't tell me to shut up. You're running your mouth beyond it. Somebody just got that on the you here. Shut up with that. When you going to get on our mouth and start the action. So we all be here. Commissioner Molina, 
If you think I'm going to stop talking and just walk away, I will not. I am going to stand up. I am going to keep my voice heard. I'm going to fight until there's justice for my brother and all 16 members who didn't get a chance to stand up and fight for themselves in our court system. Thank you. this year and the 16 deaths we experienced last year. When a New Yorker enters a government facility, whether it be a school or a hospital or a jail, our most solemn responsibility is to just keep them alive. And we are failing at that. The city of New York is failing its people. The Department of Corrections has blood on its hands. Yesterday, 
I went to GRDC. I went to the housing units where Eric lived. I saw men living in squalor. Leaks all across the floor with old brown water. Garbage strewn everywhere. Food tossed everywhere. This is no condition for human beings. I talked to men who were being strip searched multiple times a day. And forever in New York City jails, we have guaranteed individuals in the general pop, general population have 14 hours out of jail time, out of cell time. Now, the Department of Corrections has decided unilaterally that they are cutting that down to 17, to seven hours out of cell time. 17 hours stuck in a box. 17 hours stuck in a teeny cell. This is not rehabilitative. This does not provide access to mental health programming. This doesn't provide people with the help they need. This exacerbates the mental health problems that unfortunately plague too many of the people on Rikers Island. Instead of expanding the PACE units, instead of expanding the CAP units, units that we know evidence-based provide help and support and stability, we are worsening the situation. We are expanding the approach of solitary confinement at a time when it needs to be eliminated. So I want you to know, Dina family, Ms. Poindexter, each and every person who has suffered the deep pain of losing a family member on Rikers Island, these deaths are not in vain. We will roar for justice. We will fight to ensure that solitary confinement ends. We will work to ensure that Rikers Island closes. We will demand dignity for the people in the OC custody.
in a place that is squalor and dehumanizing? The answer is an investment and shutting down Rikers and ending the culture. So a few other people that are responsible, the state last year could have passed and must pass this year treatment, not jail. society treated its most vulnerable residents. We are failing miserably. One of the problems we always said is that Rikers was out of sight, out of mind. And what we do on top of that is we try to otherize the people who are there. 
Um, I talked to attorneys, I talked to everyone, and as far as I can see, no one at Rikers has been sentenced to death. No one. Right. No one at Rikers Island has been sentenced to death. And yet we are the 17th person who has died in Rikers Island. This year. That's just yeah. this year. Yeah. That's just this year. Rikers Island is set up for violence and death. That is the way it's set up. By the way, that's before my bill has been passed. So the people trying to pretend that my bill somehow is making this place more violent, it hasn't been passed. So what has been currently being done right now is causing violence and death to people who have never been sentenced to death, most of them haven't been sentenced to anything, they are simply awaiting trial. And what we found is that the longer the people are waiting at Rikers simply to be tried, the more likely violence occurs. So many of us have been pushing decarceration and speedy trial because people are waiting there in violent situations. And this is causing black and brown people to pit themselves against black and brown people. Because the people who are working there aren't safe either. But I have to be clear, it's only one group of people who are dying. I want everybody to return home how they got to Rikers. And that's not happening. We are failing. And I have to tell you, I'm getting really close to saying that someone else needs to step in because what's happening in Rikers is untenable. There is no control happening there. It's violence and death. Violence and death.
condolence after condolence after condolence after condolence. Because at this point, it is a cycle of violence and death. And Rikers Island, Rikers Island is a black stain on the history of our city. And as New Yorkers, we shouldn't stand silent before the atrocities happening on Rikers Island. I can't stand, stand silent. As a per person of faith, we are taught that wherever one of our brothers and sisters are hurting, those are the people we show up for. So when we see that people aren't showing up and then they're attaching value over the lives of some, over the lives of many, that is injustice. And where injustice exists in one place, it exists everywhere. And so I just want to say that it's no coincidence that the communities that are surveilled and incarcerated and the communities that die behind prison walls are the same. I served in the state legislature for five years and I visited prisons across this state. And I can tell you that the faces of the men that look back at me are black and brown. And that is also by design. And so when we stand here and we say, that Rikers Island must close. Yes. It's because we know the hearts of the families that are losing their loved ones. And we can't stay silent to their pain. No mother should bury her child. Ninguna madre debe de Ninguna, ni una más. Not one more. A sister shouldn't have to watch her brother die behind prison walls. We've witnessed what this violence looks like time and time again. And yet, when DOC staff comes to the hearings, they want to call torture by every other name. That's right. We're here because we won't stand for it any longer. That's right. We are here because we stand united yes. in solidarity, yes. in mourning yes. with the families that have lost their loved ones. We're here to say that this council is committed to passing this bill. Many of the members of this council are committed to passing this bill. But as Jumani said, the bill will not be the end all be all because, we, because as Rikers continues to live on, violence, pain, racism, oppression will continue to live on. And so we must close Rikers and we must continue to stand with these families. They should never feel alone. They should never mourn alone. And as Tiffany said, they shouldn't have to come to City Hall to utilize their families before us for us to understand the value of human dignity and human life. Right. Let's put value on Eric's life. media, particularly the Latin media, 
You have a role to play yeah. in the way that you foster fear in our communities when you talk about bail. Ustedes son culpables en la manera que se comunican con las comunidades de nosotros en español. El terror que ustedes nos dan cuando hablan del programa de fianza. El terror que nos que nos hace sentir cuando hablan de nuestras comunidades, que todos somos ladrones y no es la verdad. Mira nuestras familias que son impactados. Esto fue una muerte imprevenible. This was a preventable death. Yes. We should all be ashamed. I stand in solidarity. I don't want to repeat what's been said. But truly, lean on us. We are not done. We are not done. We are not done. Thank you so much. of people. 
people who need dire treatment. Rikers Island cannot continue to be our de facto mental health facility. It doesn't work. Anybody who is innately or inherently non-violent will learn to be to survive the conditions of Rikers Island. Our state has allowed Rikers Island to provide inadequate care for our most vulnerable. Many incarcerated individuals who never got treatment in the community and they let them die because that's literally murder. If you were in a hospital and a doctor had negligence, there would be some kind of trial, something. But people continue to die and there is no accountability. I also want to say, in regards to solitary confinement, my nephew, who is on Rikers Island, who is on the autism spectrum and suffers from DMDD, when having a mental health episode, has been locked in his cell for days on end without a mattress. Pepper sprayed when having a mental health, in mental health crisis. This is the type of care that we continue to give to our most vulnerable who are just asking for our help. I am tired of meeting my community members this way. These courageous people, I would like to meet them just for being in the same city, but yet we are here all the time talking about the same thing. Something needs to change and solitary now. Pass legislation like treatment on jail and close bikers.
children to be here to stand before you today and to support families like this. Unfortunately, we're at a place and time that people's lives are being disregarded, neglected, thrown away. Unfortunately, we're at a time when those of them that are in positions of responsibility and decision making are not making the right decision to save lives. What type of mind of people that lead us in this society that do not support the saving of people's lives, the taking care of those of them that are in their care, custody, and control? Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the people that are in those positions that have this responsibility to another human being. Something is wrong with them. I say to you, intro 549 should be passed. There is an urgency for this to happen as soon as possible. We're saying to our elected officials that you have a responsibility to your constituents to making sure that their lives are saved, that Rikers Island is closed, that no more people are being sent to this torture island to be killed, to die, to be neglected. So many reports are coming out now about Rikers Island. What's wrong? We know what's wrong. How do we fix it? Now, this is the time. No more meetings. I'm tired of these rallies. I'm tired of seeing these families. The harm, the hurt on their faces. Look at the families. What's wrong with our system? There's something wrong with our system, but it can be fixed. Those of them that are in position to make this right for the human beings that are in their care, custody, and control have a responsibility to us and the people. That's right, I vote today. I matter today. I pay taxes today. I demand.
Jedediah will be saved, and, and Israel will be saved. Will live in safety. This is the name in which, by which, by which you are called. The Lord our righteousness. Our Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness.
this. And for as much as you hear and see it on TV and movies and from other people, losing someone is one of the most undescribable pains my family, like many others, have ever experienced. And you would find out it doesn't feel real. When you look back on the days leading up to it, it doesn't make sense. When you feel guilty for what you could have said, what you should have said, for what you did that one day, for what you didn't do, it eats you. People start crying, people start apologizing, people start screaming, all asking and praying why. The worst part is even when you find out why, it's never enough. I can't speak on everything what my family is doing right now or will do later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on smiling. After time has passed, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to hug my family and say how much I love you. I'm going to turn 17 this week. I'm going to be happy, not only for my family, but for my brother, whose name was Aaron, whose room was red.
David Lopez was the 11th victim as an inmate at Rikers Island. And they're putting all the blame on all these young people who died. And they're not to blame. They were waiting trial for God's sake. Michael died on a Friday. His court case was a Monday following, and he ended up dying before showing up to court for a minor thing, stealing from a store. And they put him in jail May the 15th. I never even heard from him until a week before he passed. He had been in, in jail previously. Rikers Island needs to shut down. We fucking vamped the place. Set up programs for these young men and women who are waiting trial. Give them things to do instead of leaving them vacant with nothing to do but fighting and arguing and getting beaten up and getting high. They need a revamp. Right now, how many How many have died so far? 17? This year. This year alone. For all kinds of nonsense. They don't, they're human beings. Nobody's saying that they were criminals. We're saying help them. Help them. Don't put them out there doing nothing and treating them like shit. I've heard stories of my own son. Ma, the, the uh, corrections officer, paraded me naked because I made a stupid comment in front of everybody. Ma, things are really bad. I'm a changed person. I don't know how to live anymore. Ma, do you know what's going on inside? There's nothing to do here. Everybody's just fighting each other because there's nothing to do here. They need programs. They need mental health assistance. They need drug counseling assistance. They need books to read, for God's sake. They need a, a group, you know, to get groups together and talk about why they're there. Not to get killed while they're there. Not to die unjustifiably. They murdered all of those 17 people. Right. And that includes my son. That is murder, it's a crime. It's a fucking crime. And I'm tired of hearing every other day on the news, another another uh, inmate died. But you know what they don't do? They, they do it like this. Oh, another inmate died right in Island. Next. Why don't they talk about what's going on in this system? My son, he was a nice, nice young man. And I'm sure others were as well. They didn't deserve to die. I get a call on Friday more afternoon. Oh, we're sorry, your son passed away. What? I just spoke to him the other day. They need programs, they need help, they need assistance, and it wasn't right that my child died. It was not right. And the other, other, other who died, it's just not right. Where did they get the drugs? Where did they get the stuff to hang themselves with? Why wasn't anybody watching them? Everything is on camera. They say, oh, they saw your son on camera doing something. He was in a mental health medical unit where he was under observation. So why the hell did he die? Why did he die? So don't tell me that Vikas is okay. They need to fucking shut it down. And I'm mad at the mayor, and I'm mad at the governor, because they're not doing anything. They're slipping it under the carpet. Now they're more involved with the Venezuelans coming in. But what about the, the young men who were homeless anyway, who had problems anyway, no programs? The system sucks. The system is not right. And I'm tired of listening and learning stuff on the news sick of it. And I don't know what they're going to do. They need to do something now. Today. Listen to us. Please help our children. Listen to us. We're the suffering. They ask for help. 
They asked for help and all the died. time, and they didn't get help. nothing. They put it in the yard. Why? Yeah. When they screamed, I needed help. I need somebody to call me. That's right. And they put it in the yard for no reason. And they take him out of the hospital. When they yeah. arrest him at the hospital.
got on a Friday, I wake up and I'm nauseous. I'm sick to my stomach and I wonder who's next. Save them now. Save them. Save them. Save them. Yes! 